A media report claims China is seducing a U.S. ally with a promise of a COVID-19 vaccine. What's the story? And when a new vaccine is ready, will countries cooperate or compete? And China-U.S. relations on the brink. The Trump administration keeps hyping up the so-called China threat, while China accuses the U.S. of breaching the very bottom line of international norms. How long will things go? Is there a way out? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Qiuyuan, sitting in for Liu Xin. Now, China has agreed to help the Philippines with coronavirus vaccine procurement following a request from the country's president, Rodrigo Duterte. But some U.S. reports claim China is trying to seduce an important U.S. ally with vaccine promises. So what are the dangers of politicizing vaccine development and how might countries use a new vaccine as leverage against one another on the global stage? And when a vaccine actually be available? Well, joining me are Zun Ahmed Khan, a research fellow at Tsinghua University, and Mr. Rong Ying, vice president of the China Institute of International Studies. Welcome to you both. So let's talk about this. The U.S. newspaper, the Washington Examiner, published a recent report that says China is making an apparent effort to woo the Philippines by providing them with a coronavirus vaccine. But in his State of the Nation address, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte actually says he directly asked Xi Jinping, uh, the Chinese president, if the Philippines could receive or even buy the vaccines from China. So let me begin with you, Mr. Rohn. Why would the paper portray the exchange the way it did? Does this portrayal perhaps reflect U.S. government sentiment towards Duterte's request? I think the report uh, reflects uh, the um, two uh, uh, things. First and foremost is that the U.S. is still, I mean, sort of uh, uh, uphold a kind of uh, 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 misgivings that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the that war that worries that the uh, its relationship um, about the relationship uh, with uh, allies like Philippines that. Because of the uh, the U.S. The poor handling of the pandemic of uh, of COVID-19 at home, and consequently its relationship with allies like that, it is uh, worried that that would affect the relationship with allies like that. The second, uh, uh, I think, part is that it is also being uh, uh, showed that the war is that it's in the so-called race. For manufacturing or developing vaccine, it is uh, losing uh, this uh, this race in the sense that China will will be uh, uh, in the forerun. Even though there are, I think, reports that the U.S. Uh, uh, United States is also doing pretty well. The question, of course, is related to when the vaccine becomes does becomes available, how it is going to uh, sort of uh, allocate or how it's going to distribute in the sense that it would not uh, repeat or replicate the problems or the, the, uh, in, the, in the first few months when the uh, situation like the shortage of PPEs and others that cause big problems and unnecessary sufferings of the patients and the uh, uh, and innocent people as a whole. And June, let me bring you into this. Do you agree with what's being said? How would you explain such an development? So uh, I definitely agree with Professor, what Professor Rong Ying just said. Uh, one of the issues with the U.S.'s mentality is that they think with a zero-sum mindset, a zero-sum mentality. So this is to say that if the Philippines is a key ally of the U.S. in a certain region, then they should refuse cooperation with China, even if it benefits their own people. Now, this is an unreasonable request, an unreasonable expectation to have. And I think, uh, on the other hand, China does not make such requests or such demands of uh, its partners. China doesn't use the term allies. So you see, we see a key difference, a major difference in the approach both of these countries have. The second point for Professor Rong, uh, I would also like to elaborate on that point, is that, yes, China is leading right now the race or uh, uh, the progress on the vaccine. China doesn't really call it a race. For China, this is a, a definite reality. We have to progress. We have to cooperate uh, towards the vaccine because countries are suffering. Politics is a luxury. And when you see billions of people in the world living in uncertainty, we realize that the vaccine is a necessity that we need to try our best to uh, achieve. So for instance, right now, about 114 vaccines are in the process of being developed. 
uh, less than about 24 of them are in human trials and the ones that have reached phase 3 are almost all Chinese companies. So definitely the fact that China is leading this race right now, maybe it hurts the U.S. We see that the U.S. is accusing China and this is not too different from what the kind of accusations we have seen in the past, especially vis-a-vis -vis the 5G uh, development as well. So I agree with Professor Wrong and I think this is an unfortunate development and it hurts not only the people in other parts of the world and China, but it can hurt the people in the United States the most. Now, the United States might find this uncomfortable, but from the Philippines' standpoint, the Philippine now has over 83,000 coronavirus cases in the country, making Duterte's request a reasonable one. But considering his intentions of getting closer to China and distancing the country somewhat from the United States, Jun, over to you again. Uh, he made clear after coming to power in 2016 his policy how much of this decision to ask China directly was guided by his policy I mentioned earlier. I think uh, the Philippines is being pragmatic and practical. I think uh, the fact that countries have differences, long-standing differences, should not come in the way of mutually beneficial cooperation. This is the policy standpoint of China, and this is also a very pragmatic and, and I think it's, it's an objective uh, approach towards problems that we face. If there's anything that we have learned in the experience of COVID-19, it is that uh, we have much more in common and much more to cooperate on. So for the Philippines to refuse a vaccine from China would be unreasonable. I don't see any rational basis for them to do so. And if they have long-standing differences with China, there are appropriate mechanisms to establish existing mechanisms to discuss those differences. And those should not come in the way for the betterment of the people on both sides. So let's talk about more implications of this. Mr. Rohn, the U.S. considers the Philippines to be an ally in the Asian Pacific region. Zoom talked about this a little earlier. And the U.S. has recently caught China's claims in the South China Sea unlawful, a sentiment that the Philippines has expressed in the past. Now, what has traditionally binded the U.S. and the Philippines as strategic allies? And how much does the South China Sea matter in that alliance? My Duterte's request for vaccine aid this time from China pose a threat to the U.S. What what has bind, binding, uh, bind, binded, bonded the uh, Philippines and the United States is a history. I think the um, sort of uh, uh, unfortunate history of the colonization of the United States over the Philippines. And of course, I think in the course of the, uh, uh, in, the, in, the in the past, it has also been uh, sort of forged closely on I mean, the economic and uh, political and strategic interests. So uh, I, I think the, 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 quest, the big question I think for the United States and to some extent for the Philippines people is that now the Philippines has become an independent country even though they have a strong and uh, uh, relationship and uh, in the sense of their, 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 their allies. So I think uh, the Philippines are entitled to make decisions, to 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 develop a relationship with other countries like like China, with close allies, economically, politically, despite the fact there are some differences and different sort of positions in terms of the uh, territorial and maritime rights. And the the good thing is that over the past years, and particularly after uh, after the uh, President Duterte took over, the two sides had reached an understanding to resolve or to handle the, their differences in a, in a peaceful way and through negotiations. And I think that the, the episode of that uh, vaccine uh, shows that given the, that uh, uh, pragmatic and strong uh, 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 relationship, now I think uh, the uh, Philippines and the Chinese are realize that uh, in the facing the common uh, the public uh, sort of health issues, they need to work together. And for that, I think China or Philippines is a, is a more reliable sort of partners and sources for, for that. And of course, China has already pledged clearly, loud and clear that uh, if it, uh, a vaccine uh, uh, for COVID-19 is developed, it would make it uh, the global public goods and available to all the countries necessary uh, that is needed. And this is a solemn pledge. And I think uh, the Philippines realized and accepted that. That's why I think they, they turn to China and they want to see how much and how where China can help. But now having said that, Zoom, how will it shape the U.S. view of the Philippines alliance? 
Sorry, can you come? Yeah, sure. So how do you think the United States will view the Philippines alliance giving the new development now? Will it change? Yes. I think Professor Ronging explained uh, incredibly well what the relationship between the Philippines and the United States is. Um, I would like to point out that for sure the United States, as I said earlier, looks at things with a zero-sum mindset, which is unhealthy. Uh, on the other hand, China has pledged that a vaccine, if, if China develops a vaccine first, it will be a public good. And the reason for this is because China realizes that stability in the region at large, in the world at large, is beneficial to China itself as well. So uh, for the United States uh, to view Philippines' uh, openness to accept a vaccine from China may obviously uh, in a way threaten the United States perception on a stronghold on a key ally in this region, a region of immense strategic interest to the U.S. But at the same time, we have to look at the fact that for China, the stakes in the region are long term as they are not in the U.S. So I think definitely the suspicion from the U.S. is understandable, but the fact is that more countries, looking at how unreliable the United States has exhibited itself to be, looking at the fact that the U.S. did not turn, uh, to take a step forward to help other countries the way China has, all of these factors are going to play a key role to determine the position that countries will take in the near future, especially vis-a-vis -vis developments with respect to COVID-19 vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. Another story about vaccine research is that the U.S. has accused China of hacking their coronavirus vaccine research. The U.K. and Canada joined the U.S. in accusing Russia for the same deeds. Uh, Mr. Brown, can such accusations be verified? And more importantly, why aren't these countries working together to create a vaccine instead of butting heads? I mean, is cooperation here too idealistic? Indeed, I think the second part of the question is indeed, I think, answered very fair, the question that you raised. I think at this moment, we have to really uphold the, th the mindset or thinking that uh, facing, in facing the, the pandemic of COVID-19, I think even when the vaccine becomes available, we should uphold the thinking that nobody is going to save unless and until everybody is safe. Mm -hmm. So making or presenting the development of vaccine as a zero-sum race and also Groundlessly, I mean, uh, I'm pointing a finger without any solid, uh, any evidence, and groundlessly sort of accusing uh, other sort of developers like China, in China and Russia is indeed uh, very pathetic, and I think without any moral ground. And uh, we are facing a pandemic unprecedented in, I mean, hundred years, and since uh, talking about so many decades, and it's, it's caused so many sufferings of the people. With no one, no exception, United States, the West, the South, the, the, the East, the, South, the North and the South. And, but in the end, I think it would be those vulnerable countries, these developing countries, those people that is, would be not, uh, sort of cannot afford to that, will suffer. So I think we, we, we sh uh, I think we should uh, get rid of this mindset and learn the good lessons uh, from the, uh, the, 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 the past experience and work together for global cooperation, not global dysfunction. Yeah, and now here's a question, a Zoom. Because recent events have shown that the coronavirus pandemic and by extension a vaccine for it aren't immune to the tit for tat between the United States and China. So if China offers other countries their vaccine, might the United States try to dissuade those countries from accepting or vice versa? What do you think? I think yes. Uh, as we see the events unfolding, as Professor Wong has been mentioning as well, the United States seems to be using all kinds of tactics. For now, the accusation that the Chinese or the Russians are trying to hack the United States efforts, uh, the research on vaccine is another attempt to delegitimize or discredit or to make China seem to be um, an unethical country in a sense. But the real key point is that people are suffering. We are going through a state of human catastrophe because it is not just about the number of virus cases, not, the, not about the number of deaths. We have seen tragedies with higher death tolls. It is about the uncertainty of both life and death. And this is the reality that countries are facing at this point. So maybe the United States can try to dissuade. Maybe in the short term, in the short term period, China will suffer for being on the right side of history. But in the long run, I definitely think that countries may realize, maybe it can take some decades, some years, 
for us to reflect on who was really on the right side of history. So, yes, sure, the United States may dissuade countries from taking the Chinese vaccine, but maybe countries have suffered enough to know better, and I hope that is the case. Yeah, we need a moment of global cooperation more than any other time. Thank you very much, Jun Ahmed Khan, a research fellow at Tsinghua University, and Mr. Rongying, vice president of the China Institute of International Studies.